You're listening to Broncos for Breakfast with Nick Kendall and Scott Kennedy. Head on over to milehighhuddle.com for all things Broncos. Good morning, Broncos country. All righty, hitting the go live here, and we got to get our Facebook group in here because we don't want to leave our Facebook peeps out in the cold for Broncos for breakfast. You know, they're not sitting at the kids' table today. All five check marks are in, and uh, welcome in, welcome in. It is 7.30 Mountain Time, God's time as I like to say, and uh, it's time for another episode of Broncos for Breakfast. And I'm Nick Kendall and joined by Scott Kennedy. Scott, how are you doing today? I wasn't sure I was going to be here today, but uh, it all worked out. Yeah, I actually forgot about that. So I'm I'm glad uh, I'm, that y- you are here. I, I I wasn't prepared to go solo, so uh, I'm certainly glad you're here today. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, what maybe we were gonna do a hike today, depending on the weather. But it was nice enough yesterday, and we got back. We that took the uh, five forty ferry. So actually, today is the latest I've wo- uh, woken up in about three or four days um, with my five forty five a.m. alarm. So uh, I'm giving my parents who are visiting from uh, Eastern Iowa. A chance to sleep in today um, while I'm here working again. So uh, yeah, it's, we had it's been eight, great. Eight a.m. match an hour from my house, so we got there at six fifty-five on Sunday mm-hmm. morning. So my yeah. son's a middle schooler, so you know they don't start till after nine. He's like, I yep. get to sleep in. School starts. <laughs> yep, that's. I could uh, be begging for school to start, buddy. It's been uh, it's been a good time though seeing the parents. We just got back from the uh, the San Juan Islands up uh, north in between. Like Washington kind of makes a hand, and there's the peninsula. There's some glaciated islands right next to Victoria Island, Vancouver, and Washington and the Olympics. Beautiful place. There's a bunch of islands you can get to four by ferry. And uh, while we went to one of the mountains for a view, we could see for feet because there was so much clouds and mist and whatnot. Classic Pacific Northwest. Um, traded that in day later, we went out on a four hour whale watch tour and we saw killer whales for about, uh, three, four hours. And we saw them make three, uh, separate kills. Um, and it was a pot of five and there was, it was a mother with five or four young males and she was teaching them how to kill the seal. And, uh, it was cruel, but also it was indescribable. It was really incredible. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's part of the cycle. It's just the, uh, you, you mentioned the word cruel. They don't they don't call those things nice whales. You know, they're no. not they're not making kosher kills. The, the the killer whales can can do some pretty dastardly stuff. Yeah. Uh, out there, you know, playing with their food and, you know, turning mm-hmm. baby seals into into a, a badminton back and forth with yep. their tails. I mean, they do some some crazy stuff. But for for my money, they're they're the baddest, baddest thing on the planet. Hands down. I mean, you yeah, can, it you was line. You can go elephant mm-mm. orcas. Orcas are the baddest thing on the planet. And what's amazing is I don't think there's been, you know, welcome to, uh, you know, nature show for breakfast. Got to do a David. Uh, Attenborough I don't think there's accent. been a, a, a in the wild, a um, a documented attack on a, on a human. They're very curious, but they're, you know, I mean, you see some of these pictures, these people canoeing over these whales that are three times the size of their canoe. And I'm like, you know, I would just soon have a little safer distance between me and wildlife. I know they're they're extremely intelligent, but I, I don't want to be the first. Yeah, then you would be the first because killer whales, there's never been a reported attack on killer whales on a human, which makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Um, it does because they're kings of the ocean. Yeah, um, but that's, that's that's not our food. What, what are you guys? What are you, you, you <laughs> two legged, goofy looking things? You don't look like food. Who are you? They're, I mean, they're unbelievably intelligent. Yeah, we saw three separate seal kills. We also saw um, a few spy hops where they stick their whole head out and kind of look around for a second, which is crazy. And we saw a few <laughs> full breaches as well by the youngest male. So um, if you ever get a chance to go out in the San Juan Islands, um, hit me up because I'm coming yeah. with. No, but it was it's unbelievably beautiful. Check it out for sure. That's a, that's a great time. Um, well, let's get to football now. As, uh, guys, welcome in. This is Broncos for Breakfast. You can find Scott and myself on Twitter. Scott, of course, at Scout Kennedy and myself at Nick Kendall MHH. While you guys are over on Twitter, follow us at Mile High Huddle as well as at Huddle Up Pod. Um, our Facebook folks, we already got the likes in here, of course. The man, the myth, the legend coming in with the heart. We love, we heart back at you, buddy. Gary Leeds Palmer with the heart already in here. We also got the likes from Rob Williams, Steve Lazuski, DeAndre Weatherspoon, Louis Roybal. So good to see you guys. If you guys are joining us on Facebook today, also please make sure you go to facebook.com 
forward slash mile high huddle become a supporter also you can check out facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle pod you're going to see all our content there um and conversations obviously the main place where we're going to have com- uh, conversations here is in the chat during the live stream but if you guys add us or join the conversations on those pages as well that'd be greatly appreciated and uh, if you're just dying for more bronco content the 45 minutes to an hour you get on here isn't enough go on to facebook if you guys are joining us on youtube today please make sure you subscribe like and share that is so important and it costs you absolutely nothing it's the second most helpful thing you can do to this channel to this show to scott and myself subscribe like and share to mile high huddle as well as youtube.com forward slash c forward slash scott kennedy i'm going to drop his auto sub right here if you guys just click that link it'll take you to his channel um he's going to have draft content general nfl content and i'm sure because of uh, this relationship here uh more and more bronco specific content as well as we move forward so i'm um, really excited about that scott do you have anything um that's that's new that's fresh uh, hot off the press no nope, not just yet a lot like okay. i said last week a lot of the old stuff is is bubbling to the surface a lot of comments on the senior bowl guys as as the the mainstream the general public uh the next level of crazy fans you know there's there's people like us the full-on lunatics then there's the okay camp started. I'm interested, and then there's the the game day people who pretty mm-hmm. much only watch. So we're to the second level of of, of fans that are starting to learn about uh, learn about these guys, uh, the new guys to the team and stuff. Yeah, nope, absolutely. It's uh, it's good to see you guys. Also, if you're new, welcome in. Um, obviously, we'll have some new listeners here as uh, everything is really starting to get going. Um, and like I said, if you guys subscribe, like, and share, that's probably the second most helpful thing you can do to this show, um, to this channel, to make sure you keep the lights on for Scott and myself, for Broncos for Breakfast. Chad wasn't sure a morning show would be profitable, you know, if there'd be enough interest there. So um, if you like, subscribe, like, and share, let him know on Twitter also. That helps a lot. Number one thing you can do, though, be like our guy Max Power here, coming in with a two-pound two, uh, two pound, um, Max Power across the pond there, saying, hi, guys, any thoughts on trading for C.J. Henderson? And Max is always... Uh, consistently coming in and supporting the show with these super chats like this. So uh, be like Max um, and Max is doing what he can to keep the lights on here for us. Um, because I mean, while we do seem like we're going to stick or stick around here for a little bit, cause you guys have been showing the love. Um, it's always a, uh, it's a rough business out there, right? It's eat or be eaten. So uh, when Max is helping us, we're uh, eating. And that's how we got started with the killer whales this morning. I mean, we're, we've come full circle. Exactly. See, that's boom. That's, that's, that's why we work, Scott. Perfect little lead there. Um, but Max coming in. Hi guys. Any thoughts for trading for CJ Henderson? Max, the first thing I will say is don't you dare whisper this to George Payton because he would be on the phone right now because that man has a ravenous hunger for cornerbacks. He he's never seen a cornerback that he wouldn't consider. I mean, I was talking on Twitter the other day. Somebody's like, Oh, what do you think the Broncos first round pick could be next year? I'm like, well, quarterback is obviously the one that until you have it, you have to list it. But the other two positions edge and offensive tackle, maybe interior defensive line. Somebody's like, well, what about cornerback? I'm like, dear God, I guess it could happen again. Cause it's such a valuable position <laughs> and you need more, but like at some point you have to fill out the rest of the roster, but the uh, CJ it, Henderson, it, it, at least you're talking about players where you can put five of them on the field at one time. You know, True. Dan Reeves, when he was general manager in Atlanta, kept drafting tight ends, kept trading away draft picks. You know, he traded away that what ended up being the rights to Jamal Lewis to draft another tight end. Jamal Lewis. Uh, yeah, not that I'm bitter. I don't hold on to grudges or anything. So, you know, at least at least you're talking about a place where, you know, you can put multiple guys on the field for goodness sakes. The cornerback is one of those positions where the more you have, the better typically, but uh, not there probably has to be a point of diminishing returns where it's like, okay, like we need to do something with the offensive line, quarterback position, wide receiver, edge rusher, et cetera. But uh, CJ Henderson, um, he's very talented. And before the Broncos drafted, um, honestly, the, the more I learned about his scheme last year, there's, there's some similarities between CJ Henderson and the profile of Caleb Farley, the long, the off cornerback, some tackling issues, but the click and close, the fluidity, the explosiveness. I mean, they're, they're incredible. Um, there does seem to be some real issues there with CJ Henderson, maybe some off the field concerns. Um, he's already like, I think he hasn't reported to Jags camp here. So um, I can't speak to uh, exactly what's going on with CJ Henderson, but uh, if he's available for like, you know, a fourth round pick, even though the Broncos cornerback room is already, you know, filled to the max, I would say um, he's just too talented that I wouldn't be interested in taking a, a swing unless there's something like, you know, very concerning going on off the field, which is possible. I don't know. 
Yeah, and I, I, I agree with you. I was going to say cut rate, you know, flat out. You know, let's put this in a, in a Twitter size bite. If he's available for cut rate, then yes. But you want low risk, high reward. They spent a big, uh, a high pick on him. Uh, top 10, it was seven or eight or nine, somewhere in that neighborhood. Nine. No, you're not giving a first round pick for him. Someone they're trying, they're giving up on after one year. No way. Second round, mm -mm, mm -mm, no, you can do better than that, especially in other positions where you can need to fill a hole where you typically get uh, your next little players, linebackers, safeties, uh, interior linemen, those type of things uh, in the second round. Third round, maybe, maybe. Fourth round, okay, now I'm interested. Yep. If, I, if yep. I burn a fourth round pick on this guy and have to wave him, so be it. They're eating all the dead cap money anyway. Exactly. Um, but uh, other than that, it's not a position of need by any stretch of the imagination as long as everybody stays healthy. And this guy's got some luggage, some some baggage he's bringing with him. You know, why would yep. Jacksonville give up on him this quick uh, within a year after a meh rookie season? Yep. Um, that I, I think uh, I, I don't I don't think so. Fourth round would be the earliest I'd consider it. Uh, I, I agree with you, Nick. It's he just reeks of a Kansas City Chiefs uh, trade possibility because they are trying to go for it now that's a team that could use some cornerback depth and they take the character concerns left and right well and and the, the thing is is when you the, the patriots have made a living on this stuff you know that's rehabilitating also, guys yeah. like this because they've got enough veterans and the we don't need you you need us mentality like listen mm -hmm. if you want to come in here and work and win great come on you're going to do it at a cut rate and then then maybe you'll sign a big contract with your next contract after you've rehabilitated your reputation yep. but um you know, they're not going to give up anything for them, but player people are willing to take less money to take more of a chance to go into an organization like that, where they are going to be elevated. The Denver Broncos aren't there just yet. No. Uh, you know, they can be, but we, we've yeah. seen this before that winning ends up being the best recruiter. So I, I, I again, for CJ Henderson, my, my quick answer is no, you, you don't make a trade for him. Uh, if they're giving him away, you take him, but you don't make a trade for him. Yeah. Yep. That's a, uh, that's a big one. I agree with you there completely. Um, the other team that jumps out to me, any teams that are like, Oh my God, we do or die this season. We got to go for it right now. We can use a cornerback. If I was the Packers, I would probably make, see if he's available at all. Cause watching Kevin King get absolutely toasted by the, uh, by the Tampa Bay Tom Brady's last year. Um, they already have arguably the number two or three best cornerback in football, Jair Alexander, get CJ Henderson out there, just get more talent in the cornerback room. You got a chance in the NFC. I mean, it's really just Tampa Bay and Green Bay. In well, my opinion, I mean, right now, you know, just up the road, you know, who who needs who needs defensive backs more than anybody in the league? You know, the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Um. You know they 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 got AJ Terrell after. Uh. There goes the late. I told there you. It, boom. To <laughs> I said my the spot here on this side is making. I'm about to burn out. Sound. So hopefully that's not too distracting. The sunset on the Braves there. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, that, they can be in the dark. I'm okay with that. So um, <laughs> otherwise, I'm just going to I'm going to plug right along here. No, um, we're doing great. I think it's a good. But, um, uh, go ahead. You know, but, you know, they, I, don't, I wouldn't want the Falcons. To, you're not giving anything up for them. If they're giving away, you take him. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're not giving up. You're not giving up a bunch of draft capital for a guy who they're giving up on after one year. No way. 100%. And a good transition here with that light burning out saying, okay. Enough CJ Henderson talk, but let's yeah, say hello to some on. people. Come on. <laughs> Darab saying good morning. Good to you, uh, Darab. Hopefully, uh, for pronouncing it wrong, if you're going to come in here and join the conversation, for the least I can do is get your name right. So if you can give me a phonetic pronunciation, um, I would love to do that for you. We got Dakota um, in the house as well. Um, U.S. Dave's in the house. Good to see you. Morning to you. Dave Glassman, always good to see you. Quincy Keyshaw is in the house. Mo Ron. Morning, Nick and Scott. Good to see you. Stephen Baumgartner. He says, morning, everyone. I can't believe he didn't say, oh, here it is. Okay. Drew Huck is my quarterback. There it goes. I was, are you kidnapped, Stephen? Where's the other comment? Tom's in the house. He says, what's up, guys? I hear the quarterback battle is getting heated up. And Fan almost slipped up, uh, slipped up saying who his favorite quarterback is. I don't think he was saying who his favorite quarterback is. I think he was trying to play it politically correct. But uh, all he was going to say was that uh, Teddy Bridgewater is more accurate, which, uh, okay. You know, duh. Um, Ronjo in the house, morning all, uh, falling sloth. Good morning, Broncos country. Jeremy Sean, morning, fellas. Clee Torres with a nice comment here with a uh, fish going on in that picture there, man. I had so much good seafood this weekend. Ugh. Um, this show is so much better than the evening show. Why can't you guys have that slot instead? Clee, we appreciate you, but uh, there is plenty of pieces of pie to go around. And uh, also, I uh, co host two evening shows. So uh, 
you know, this is this is this is really just Scott propaganda as far as I'm concerned. Um, but the <laughs> where's thank Willie? You for... Willie loves me. Where, where oh, he's yeah. got where's in the shop with Willie? Willie's my <laughs> biggest fan. Willie, um, uh, yeah, so, Willie. no, it, um, tell your friends, you know, yeah. let's let's make this the show. You know, it's 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 a, when 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 uh, Chad and I first started talking about this in February, January or February, I said, let's do drive time. You know, let's do drive yep. time for December. This is a good time for people to be on here. You know, put it put it on and listen. Uh, I don't know if there's better audio ways. So you're not eating up your data, but doesn't everybody have uh, unlimited data at this point anyway? But you know, yeah. I thought drive time would be a good idea, and and so far it's been good. We're working on April, May, June, July. Uh, this is our fifth month, bud. Jesus. That's a lot, man. I've there's there's a a lot of my hot air on YouTube at this point. <laughs> um, De DeAndre coming in here. Uh, good morning, guys. Go Broncos. Good morning to you, DeAndre. Victor Rios is in the house. Good to see uh, Robert Kitchens. If our quarterbacks don't play well, could you see us getting Rivers? Um, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, that's uh, I think the timing of Rivers saying that to Carson Wentz's foot injury news is not a coincidence. Isn't so uh, I think two years old. You know what? what at this, as old as I, is there a different Rivers we're talking about here? He's as old as I am. It's probably one of his fifty-two kids that he must be talking about. Um, I'm falling you know, he's he's got to he's he's got to have kids coming through the process by now. That's how I've met all you know when I was doing recruiting. That's how I met all my all my childhood heroes because they all had kids going through the recruiting process. Yeah, no, it's uh, I think he has enough kids to fill out his own football team or he's own one side. So of... he's just a young buck. Okay, yeah, that's. I mean, honestly, if he protects the football, but that's never been Philip Rivers' strong suit, so. Uh, he did take a team to the playoffs last year, so I guess it is it is a possibility. But is he actually going to be that much better than Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater at this point in his career? I don't know. Now, the one thing you would say is that he would bring unquestionable leadership to that team and that side of the football, which they do not have right now. So it's something to ponder, I do think. Uh, if if I, if Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater look like absolute garbage um, this Saturday, maybe, or in the joint practices, maybe I'll start banging that drum. We'll see. Falling Sloth saying, wow, that's incredible. Predation is always so rare to see in the wild, but a treat. Yeah, it was like, incredible. Joining us late, we were talking about uh, Nick's seeing uh, orcas doing their their killer whale stuff. Yep, that's what he's responding to. I'm still working down the chat. <laughs> that was a while um, ago. Stoked fly fishing. I just jumped in, and I don't know what's going on, but killer whales are awesome. Go Broncos. They were awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Um, it was pretty darn cool to see. I'm serious, guys. It was incredible. Um, let's talk about that quarterback lock. We're going to get the lock here in a second. Robert Caslow's in the house. Joseph T. Fisher. Rick Loveland's in the house. Good to see you. Um, da, da, da. We got, oh, Peter Middleton's in the house. Hey, guys. And then Andrew Lampy coming in with the stars, no doubt about it. Um, and uh, Peter also with the stars, which I had more stars to send. We'll do next week. And he You're says, oh, star. bug stars. <laughs> no, the uh, yeah, that was, we got several comments on uh, who, who was just ahead of that, 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 uh, gave the stars was Andrew, Andrew Lampy. We got Andrew. You must've nailed it because you got a bunch of comments on that. Thank you very much. Yep. And still talk, talking about stars. Gary leads Palmer coming in as well. My dudes, Nick and Scott for breakfast. Well, uh, be careful on that one. Um, what could be better? Go Broncos. Um, I don't know how nutritious I am, but I guess not nutritious, en nutritious enough for those Orca whales. So uh, they, <laughs> they can, they pick out, they're very meticulous too. They use sonar on their predators. So they find the most, uh, fatty dense uh nutritious areas and they leave the rest so well, i need to start cutting cool. weight. i started yesterday so <laughs> i uh ever since moving to the pacific northwest i've lost a good bit of weight but that's because i've been hiking almost every weekend um kyle coming in unpopular opinion it's okay to be skeptical of drew and dislike teddy as the number two option in town while still wanting the team to succeed um kyle there's only one wrong way to be a fan and that is to tell others how you can be a fan, unless you're harassing the players, like being in as a grown adult, that's another wrong way. I will gatekeep that one. Um, but, uh, I hate people saying, well, you're only a true fan. If X, there are many ways to fan, as long as you're being somewhat respectful, you know, you do you, um, just don't be a gatekeep fan. Those are the absolute worst. There, there's a difference between loyalty and blind loyalty. And yes. if you're not skeptical about the QB position period on this team, you're, you're just blindly loyal. And if you're questioning people who have doubts about the quarterback position, um, you know, I call those defenders of the program type people and they drive me nuts. Yep. Uh, you know, trust the coaches. Well, I, I, I trust coaches to do what they think is right. I don't trust yep. coaches to always make the right decision at all. I mean, they, there's a zillion chances. I mean, uh, um, examples of them making the wrong decisions. So, if your answer to everything is, well, you should just trust the coaches or you have to support this guy blindly. 
then you probably shouldn't be in a in a forum like this where we're discussing these things because that's why we're discussing them is because they're fallible and there's different ways to do things. And we want to explore all the options and we want to know what you think about all the options. So uh, you won't have any problem with us. I think both of us and a lot of people in the chat here are skeptical, period, about the quarterback situation with the Denver Broncos. Yeah, and I know they say that uh, perfect is the enemy of good, but uh, I have that thing in my brain where I'm al always critiquing anything. I mean, I'll be out on a beautiful hike and I'll, you know, it'll be great, great views. You know, everything's fine. I'll be like, man, I wish it was a little clearer or man. I wish there was a little bit of a breeze or man. I wish it was this. The sun was just out a little bit more or there wasn't clouds over that peak right there. And it's like, you know, just enjoy being here. But sometimes it's just, I don't, I wouldn't say I'm a glass half empty kind of guy, but it's just like, okay, what could take this to the next level? And that's, uh, that's probably actually what got me into the draft and uh, team building conversations in general, even the, those Super Bowl teams with Peyton Manning. Okay. Can we build the offensive line a little bit better? Can we get a little bit better in the linebacker core, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why we're here and we'd enjoyed a lot. And Peter coming in here, speaking about getting a little bit better. Uh, so I said Stranod was overlooked after the draft and that Browning would be a disappointment. Glad to be right about Stranod and hope Browning proves me wrong. Um, it's still wait and see for me for Stranod because uh, there have been some plays where he's been absolutely dusted by the tight end position. Um, and, you know, that's Noah Fant, first round pick doing Noah Fant things. Um, but uh, Browning, it's I, the same boat as uh, imagine a year ago and we were making grand sweeping judgments about McTelvin Najim, who is like, oh my gosh, he barely played anything last year. He didn't look very good when he played, et cetera, et cetera. And this year's camp, he's been killing it. He's been flashing constantly. That's the same boat as Browning. Uh, you need to put him in a box, just put him away for a little bit. You know, it's it's kind of like a, a plant. You, you know, you planted the seed and you go back and check in the next day and there's not even a sprout yet. That's okay. It's not dead. It's not a wasted seed yet. You just got to keep nurturing it and come back in two weeks, three weeks, you know, keep let some the team cultivated, I guess, in that case. And then let's judge it there because it's going to take a little bit of time for Browning, especially because he's now behind the eight ball this season with the injuries he's had, but it's, he is by far not for loss yet. No. And, in, in uh, where was he drafted? Third round, I believe the very last pick of day two. I think it was. Yeah, pick. Okay. So, you know, but he, he, that's an investment, you know, if yep. whatever you get out of him this year is just a bonus. Uh, yep. Even if he comes in and contributes on special teams, but you know, one of the questions we had a couple of weeks ago was, you know, is he going to be, is he injury prone? I'm like, I don't, I don't think so. You know, I didn't, I didn't get that feeling. You go back and look, and he played about 40 games at Ohio State. I don't think he he missed many. Um, you know, and that's playing a high level, a high level every week, and didn't miss many games because of injury. Um, so, don't give up on him just yet by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's just patience. Um, we got Casey coming in here saying, Scott, you might've already answered this, but what's your opinion on the Texas Oklahoma situation? Um, I, I think we're finally legitimizing the professionalism of college football. Um, the national coalition against athletes is a communist, you know, suppressing labor, suppressing everything. They are completely, what, what they do to football players, I think is borderline criminal. Um, we can get into a lot of those things. And, you know, the, the pro one of the problems is, is, you know, amongst everyday fans is they see people getting a scholarship to college and say, well, I had to work my ass off to go to college and these guys are getting to go for free. I'm like, yeah, no, forget it. That That's apples and oranges. These guys are out here generating billions of dollars for a company and they're, they're getting paid, you know, pennies on the dollar. You know, if you've got a 60,000 student Ohio State University with all the infrastructure already built and you say, well, that scholarship's worth $25,000 a year. That might be what it's worth, but what's it cost? What's it cost Ohio state to take one kid and pluck them in and just drop them into a 60,000 university body? Nothing. It doesn't cost them anything. It's all profit. Mm -hmm. So I think we're witnessing the destruction of, uh, of the, the, it's not even the, the I wouldn't even say the destruction of the amateurism because it, it's not amateurism. It's, it's not, yeah. Uh, not in big time college sports. There's, there's way too much money involved to be called that. So this is one of the big blows. We've been inching towards it. This is this is a big step towards the 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 NCAA becoming less and less relevant. Yeah, no, it's uh feels like something's about to come here. And this feels like there's some uh, bubbling here, and there might be a death toll on the way. Um, we got Ron Joe coming in here saying, "Any news about the scuffle between uh, Garrett Bowles and Bradley Chubb? Never heard any details about how it ended up. Is it all good now?" Uh, this is going to happen in camp sometimes. It's a physical game, and these are 
relatively young men, right? Also, so they're not they're not as wise or as grown as some, and uh, it's a violent game, also. So sometimes you're going to have this happen, and uh, it's not a the worst thing in the the world as long as they can, you know, compartmentalize, you know, move on. And it does sound like they've both moved on um, from this. So uh, I don't have any issues about this. And it would have been weird if you didn't have anything ever come up, especially the trench players all the way through camp. Um, what, what y'all are, you should be a bunch of snow skiers here with the Broncos fans. I say, you know, did you fall down a lot? If you're not falling down, you're not trying hard enough to get better. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're not trying hard enough to improve. If there's no fights in August in training camp, something's wrong. (laughs) Something's wrong. These are grown men. They'll put it behind them. Uh, you know, as long as nobody's, you know, a scuffle, as long as nobody's going after knees or trying to actually injure somebody, these guys aren't going to hurt each other. And they know that. They're they're just gonna they're gonna have some pushy shovey and they'll move on, no problem. You you should have some dust ups without a doubt. Yep, it's a uh, it's when it transpires into massive on the field brawls with your quarterback ending up at the bottom. Yeah, and then of you're that. then you're worried about you know people yeah. getting hurt under piles and, and stuff yep. like that. You know, you see somebody swinging a helmet, you're you're gonna be a little nervous. Um, but you know, pushy shovey, come on, this this isn't anything. That's nothing. It's it's grappling. You know, anybody with siblings has, uh, has gone through that, you know, you're, 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 you're still going to fight for one each other for one another on game day. Absolutely. And, uh, it's also to the point of camp right now where, uh, these guys are probably getting a little tired of going at each other. Oh, you know, love having a common minute, common yes. enemy going out and practicing against somebody else. They will absolutely love it. It's, we talk about that Nick in here, yep. you know, when you can see when the chats start getting a little chippy, you know, when yep. people start going at each other, you know, no locks, the guy, no lock sucks. This, this, you're, you're an idiot. You know, guys chill. Let's focus yep. on the Oh yeah. They suck. Now we're yep. all together again. hundred <laughs> percent. Yep. That's uh, that's what we're getting to here. And the, you know, there's nobody more excited about this week of a uh, combined practice than the actual players themselves. Um, nobody makes me more excited than Steve Sconey coming in here with the $5 super chat over on YouTube. Also with a very cute uh, doggo pick making the, uh, the crescent roll looks like there with a picture over on YouTube. Thank you very much, Steve. And he says, I listen after the fact, but have a day off to recover from canoe camping on the the Wisconsin River, the White River. Um, let me know, because that sounds amazing. Speaking of the San Juans, you can go yak packing out there. There's a few small islands that are only accessible by personal boat. Um, God bless. Sign me up. I'm going to take the doggo out on a kayak with me and uh, go do some yak packing out there. That'd be a good time. Um is I this got a, a waste? pound German Shepherd that's afraid of everything? Oh, oh no. God! If I tried to get him on my kayak, he would just freak out. Oh, good lord! I follow an Instagrammer out here who does a bunch of uh, <clears throat> outdoor stuff, a lot of crabbing, fishing, etc. And they have a dog that they go kayak yak packing my, with. My last shepherd was a shepherd uh, lab mix. You know how labs love the water. Oh God! Yes. He would have been. He would have had the life jacket on and a paddle. He'd be like, "Come on." Yep, let's go. Well, the, the, they have a picture of uh, their dog with a killer whale that came up next to the boat, which is uh, scared would scare the hell out of me, but it made a really cool picture. Yeah. Um, but it comes in here. Uh, I listen after the fact. Um, okay, uh, blah, blah, blah. Is this a wasted roster if both quarterbacks bomb, or is there some time? I know there's been an argument going around Broncos country where like this was the year to go get the roster and go get the quarterback because there is going to be a lot of turnover after this year. And while that is somewhat true, I am curious how much actually actual turnover there's going to be compared to um, regular season because a lot of teams, if you're like, Oh my gosh, you're losing 33% of the roster this year. That's the average, right? Like most teams, everybody, yes, exactly. Spot rack and go click on, you know, free agents and sort by team. It looks like the entire team. There'll be Mm -hmm. 40 players whose contract expire after this year. Yep. That's, that's normal. I mean, it's, that's normal. So for, for me, and let me, let me take this one, Nick, uh, and Steve appreciate the, uh, the, 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 the contribution. Is this a wasted roster? Wasted roster if both bomb. It's a wasted season. Yep. It's a wasted season if both bomb because the roster is set up where you can be a, a playoff contender. And once you're in the playoffs with a defense like this and the playmakers on this, you can take your shot. Uh, but it's not a wasted roster because you're not missing your window. Now, if the quarterback situation isn't isn't settled in the next two years, you start to wonder a little bit because then people want to start leaving. Yeah. Then they'll want to leave and go play somewhere else. So um, I won't say if they bomb this year, it's a wasted roster because you'll have enough control and be able to bring guys in. But it it means you better do something next year um, yep. without a doubt. You better you better make a splash for the quarterback next year to get people reinvigorated or it will be a wasted roster. There's too much talent on this to have a, a – call them donut teams. 
donut teams. I've called the University of Texas Longhorns a donut team for a long time. It means you got a big hole in the middle at the quarterback position, mm. and you don't want to be a donut team. <sighs> it's been the case for half a decade now in Denver, but uh, we've seen other teams. Uh, I'm sure everyone's seen the meme of the Browns fan with the jersey with the 20 names written in with crossed out and finally get the one. Um, but I will say um, this is a conversation, like I said, it's been coming up about the Broncos wasting this roster this year. They're going to lose a lot of guys after the season, but they're also going to have a lot of cap room. And how many actual core building block pieces are set to hit the market? You know, like true t- guys that are no doubt build around pieces. You locked up Justin Simmons. You locked up Garrett Bowles. Uh, the only guy on defense that I can think of that is like a, you know, momentum roster, total culture changing that you might lose this year is Von Miller, but Von Miller is going to be 31, 32 years old off the top of my head. And he was out last year anyway. So yes, exactly. You're not, you're not missing something that was contributing last year. So you, you've been a year. You didn't like it. You didn't like not having him, but you, you know what, like, you know what life without Von Miller is like. And the other one is Cortland Sutton. And same thing. You know what life without Cortland Sutton would be? Tim Patrick was pretty good. Jerry Judy sounds like he's taken a massive step forward this year. Drew Locks even said he's just unbelievably, um, he's grown so much. Um, so Von Miller and Cortland Sutton, the rest of this young core rosters, uh, Simmons, Bulls, Fant, Judy, uh, Bradley Chubb, Draymond Jones, et cetera, still locked up multiple years. Uh, Sertan. So uh, I'm not, I don't think it's a, uh, there's some, do or die season. There's some leaders in there, you know, without yes. a doubt. You know, it, I, I, what Kareem Jackson? Yeah, but he was. They cut him, and they were ready to move on. It also sounds like Caden Stearns is having a hell of a camp. They're going to be able to replace him for, you know, that that fourth round rookie. So uh, I'm not as worried about uh, Kareem Jackson. But you're right yeah, about the leadership. When you start stacking it though, and you start looking yeah. at the spine of the team, and you say, okay, Von Miller, okay, there's you know locker room. Uh, then you go uh, Kareem Jackson. Uh, Kyle Fuller's on a one-year deal. Yep. Um, Teddy Chris Bridgewater. Callahan. Teddy you know, Bridgewater. We'll see. we'll see. But again, we talked about if it if it uh, if it bo- if the quarterbacks bomb, he ain't coming back anyway. Yeah. Um. So both linebackers, uh, uh potentially. Alexander Johnson. You know, again, yep. like I talked about the spine right up the middle. But there's money to resign those guys. Mm-hmm. There is. There, yep. you, you can make your decisions on that. And those are the guys where you look at the roster right now, and it's just to tie it back to our talk earlier about Baron Browning you have third and fourth round picks from last year or two years ago that are hopefully developing slowly behind the scenes that can come up and replace those guys. You know, we saw last year, Michael Ojemudia up and down. It'll be year three for him next year. What the Broncos do at the cornerback position will have a lot to do with what's going on behind the scenes with Michael Ojemudia. Both linebackers leaving. Are you comfortable just bringing back one? None. Uh, what's Justin Stranod been doing behind the scenes? These guys that are slowly developing that you're not seeing on game day, but um, that's the plan. That's the blueprint for having a healthy roster. You're getting those guys in the third to fifth round, maybe six or seven, but third to fifth, they're like two, three years down the line. And then hopefully by year three, year four, um, you have a spot for them where they can take it. Um, but Roy Orbison or Roy Orbison. Wow. Roy Osborne coming in here saying with all the hiking you're doing, did your beer f- uh, fund go down? My beer fund did not go down, but a few people have been saying Nick's REI fund, which I appreciate as well, because some of that hiking gear is uh, kind of expensive, but it's a, it's a good time. Um, we got Michael coming in here. Good morning, Nick and Scott from Broncos for breakfast. Good morning, Greg Smith. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha. And, uh, Broncos country. Go Broncos. Um, Dan Smoot saying over analyzing before any real bullets are flying. Dan, if we weren't out here over analyzing the show would be, Hey guys, um, good to see you. We'll see you tomorrow. And then just black. Screen. Well, and I also the, the other part of that is it's not even just over analyzing. It's uh overreacting. I call this the season, the, the season to overreact Tis the season for overreactions. You know, people are making, it's not quite as bad in the NFL as it is in, 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 uh, yep. in college, you know, with, uh, with the one loss and you're done type of thing at times. But uh, it, it is also the season, not only to overanalyze that's constant, but to overreact. Yep. That's, not too high, not too low, right? And that's one of the things that's uh, with Drew Locke. It's hard because he is such a roller coaster, right? So uh, hopefully, and that sounds like it's been the case in camp as well. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, we got stoked fly fishing coming in here. Stoked. Get at me, buddy. I've, I've been fly fishing once in Iowa, and I am dying to get out there. I'm, I'm just a drive away from Montana, Wyoming, Idaho now. So I, I'm get me out there in the water, buddy. That'd be great. I don't know if it's always like this, but I was biased but my, by my first impression of fly fishing. You know, there's some guys out there fishing. There was a guy fly fishing on the pond and it was almost like he already had him on his hook. He was just pulling the fish out every cast. Well, I was like, wow, fly fishing's legit. So I don't know if it's always that easy, but it's, uh, it was, it's, it was, uh, 
it made an impression on me as a kid. It's a good time. Um, you do need a, uh, it's hard to do it out here in Washington because there's not that many actually good uh, flat rivers. Um, a lot of them are cascading down, probably hence the Cascade Mountains. A lot of good uh, backcountry alpine lake fishing, though. So got a pack rod, excited to get out there. But he says, I've been watching from the first episode. You guys rock. Also, Moody for Glasgow. Moody is a beast. Um, this is another one we were just talking about. You know, year three, year four for those third to fifth round picks. Hopefully they are in a spot where uh, they can take over uh, for a guy who's leaving. Glasgow has two years left on his deal, but the way his con, I believe it's two years. It might be three years, but the way it's set up, I think after this year, the dead cap is minimal. So if Glasgow, they want to create a little bit of room and they're excited about not only Moody, but maybe Cushionberry, Texas step, step forward and they want to see miners at guard. Um, they could move on from Glasgow for a good cap savings with relative dead cap. I believe after this year, but Scott's probably checking behind the scenes that Glasgow contract. Um, but it's probably, you're talking 2022 there for Moody taking over for Glasgow, unless there's an injury, always the caveat, you know, for all these guys, but, uh, if there's an injury that changes the formula. Well, that's the one that was so surprising to me and why you have so much, it's a, it's a chicken of the egg type of thing. You know, you, you've yep. got so much cap room because you don't have a $25 million quarterback, but is the question around this team because you don't have a $25 million quarterback. Um, but you yep. know, when you're looking at the, at the cap room on this and you go, it's like, wait a minute, the, the, the cap hit is number one, Von Miller. Yeah. Okay. Number two, Graham Glasgow. A yep. guard. <laughs> what? You know, that's that's pretty shocking to me. And, you know, to me, that makes a candidate for, you know, you could be in trouble. His his dead cap number this year is 17 and a half. But after the six and then the three. Yeah. So um, he's a, he's got two years after this year and a six million dollar cap hit, especially if you spread it over two years after whatever the deadline is, June 1st. Mm-hmm. It's nothing. So what uh, what um, if they trade him? Is it the same? Uh, I would imagine you'd probably know that better than I would. Uh, if they trade him, the cap hit stays. You know, y- your dead cap money doesn't matter. It, it, however, you you lose that guy unless he retires, then it's great. You give your money back. You know, that's why that's why Aaron Rodgers was never going to do the Green Bay Packers a favor and retire, pay all that money back, and get him out from under that hit. No way. Um, but you know, his his cap hit n- number is twelve, but his dead cap going into next year is just six. So. Um, depending on, you know, the, depending on if you need that money right now, mm-hmm. Denver's got money they can't spend. So, or, or, or at least aren't spending. So, you know, we, we talked about bringing some of those guys back and when they're signing and you're going to have to pay them more money. Well, fine. Uh, who was that we were talking about? Was it Melvin Gordon last week, Nick, we were saying, you know, you, know, you may have overpaid for him, but the question I ask is who did you lose because you paid him? You know, it's like, well, that mm-hmm. money, you know, Going back to the Braves, when the Braves lost Brian McCann, it was because they gave BJ Upton the same contract. I'm like, okay, that hurts. <laughs> He's like, but you didn't lose anything by spending any money, spending that money on Melvin Gordon because you have money. So anyway, those are my thoughts. Yep, absolutely. And uh, got options. Lot- if you need some money, mm, there's a pretty good spot. Absolutely. Nope, you're totally right. Uh, make sure to hit that like button, folks. As Dylan says. Um, we got some Nick propaganda in here now. There we go. Nick is great. Also, my favorite propaganda, the Iowa Hawkeyes. Um, Hawkeyes all over the roster. The Iowa Broncos, I think they now have five or six Hawkeyes on the team. Um, so uh, that's always great to see. Um, I know that uh, my coworker, uh, Eric Trickle, likes to give me a hard time saying the reason the Broncos are so bad is because they have so many Iowa Hawkeyes. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good program. I, uh, I enjoy my Hawks on there, and it, it makes it really hard for me to be non-biased because I I think I've done a pretty good job overall, like removing my fan goggles when it comes to the Broncos. But that's because I put on two pairs for the Hawkeyes. Um, so when it comes to Hawkeyes on the Broncos, it's like, uh, like, you know, no offense. I'm going to give him every benefit of the doubt because I, I have a very hard time removing that bias. And I'll be completely upfront with you on that you one. You just, as a Cleveland born Atlanta grown up sports fan, oh. you're not going to find a more cynical SOB than me. You know, yeah. so you, you, the bias works the other direction when you're when you talk usually talk to an Atlanta fan. Uh, and no, we're gonna lose. No, he's gonna suck. No, everything's gonna be bad. That, that's how we are. So the bias usually works in the other direction. Yep. No, absolutely. That's a good point there. We got Richie Rich coming in the house. Good to see you. Good morning. Uh, he says Broncos for brunch always. So a little bit earlier there for Richie Rich. Eh? Nick and Scott, aside from Bulls, who is stepping up and who are the winners who can still instill that leadership and demand greatness? Um, I think he's talking about specifically along the the offense here. 
Um, and honestly, the only one that would come to mind that would have the the skins on the wall, if you will, would be Graham Glasgow because he's gotten that big contract. He's seen a thing or two. He's been in the league. He played at Michigan. Um, and the Scott said he is the second highest paid Bronco this year, cap hit wise. Now, some of that is cap finagling because the Broncos made it. So Justin Simmons and Garrett Bowles contracts are their cap. hits are low this year. They balloon a lot <laughs> in 2022 to make up for that. Um, so that's part of the nature of that. But uh, I think the other one on offense would be Graham Glasgow. Uh, I think Noah fans too young right now. Jerry Judy still got to prove it. Cortland Sutton working off the injury. Melvin Gordon, while he is here, he's older. He's made the money. He's kind of somewhat of a uh, a mercenary. Also, Melvin Gordon's kind of a different dude. Um, he is you know, he out, likes to be out there sipping wine and listen to classical music. Um, so you know, good for him. But I don't think he's as much of a uh, the guy that you're looking for he to be that relate, leader on the team. Doesn't relate to everybody quite as well. That's, that's what it sounds um, like. Um, but and I, I kind of glossed over um, the first part of that question because I was thinking, well, Garrett Bowles. I'm like, wait, aside from Bowles, I'm like, Garrett yeah. Bowles is the one that seems to really be stepping up. And you know, you don't need too many. You know, you got to have some followers too. So, um, you know, the fact that you've got a, a couple of them out there, and and you hope, you know, it, you hope it's your quarterback. You know, if Teddy's going to start, then then you you got no doubt who your on field leader is going to be. Teddy's that guy. If Drew's going to start, he needs to own it. You know, he he'll he'll need to own it and step up. Um, it, it's tough to be that guy until you win that position though. So, you know, guys in the back of their mind kind of say, you know, it, it's kind of like playing for a coach that you know is on his way out. It's like, yeah, listen, you know, whatever, whatever you say, I'm, I'm, I'm just biding my time until you're gone. So until Drew, whoever ends up being the guy, the quarterback, I think will automatically elevate to one of those positions. 100%. And Richie Rich says both sides of the ball. Um, you have plenty of uh, options on the defensive side of the ball. Bradby Chubb is one. He's about to get a big contract. Um, he's also been, you know, he came in as a man. There was no questions. Like Von Miller came in, he's a little, you know, lovey-dovey, loosey-goosey. There was never a question about Bradley Chubb's demeanor. I mean, he came in, he's business-like, day one. Um, Justin Simmons, obviously, is another one as well. Uh, you could Shelby Harris is a leader on that side of the ball. Draymond Jones probably about to get paid here pretty soon. He could be one, um, whatever linebacker they end up paying. If either of them, uh, Josie Jewell or Alexander Johnson can bring some leadership as well. So there, there are options galore on the defensive side of the ball and the offense though. It's really hard if it's not the quarterback. And right now it's definitely not the quarterback. So, well, and, and going on the defense, you know, it's the cream Jackson earlier. You know, I, I, there's there's so there's so many veterans on defense mixed in with the young players. It's a really nice mix. And then you're the, the the veterans are typically have somebody behind them that can play. So there's they're they're being pushed. Uh, just talking about the makeup of this team, it's either you know other than the quarterback position, uh, which we've said a zillion times, the guys that are on the last year of their contracts have somebody pushing them. So there there's two forms of motivation there. One, I'm playing for another contract, so that's good. Two, the guy behind me sees an opening. I want it. I want you to yep. think you don't need to pay this guy. So you're getting the best out of two positions because of the motivation in there. And uh, I think that I think talking about wasted year again on the roster, I think this roster is really set up well for internal competition to push these guys to be their best. And frankly, that includes a quarterback position because they did the exact same thing bringing in Teddy. Yep. Teddy bring it coming in to, to push Drew Locke. So I, I love the makeup of this team. Yep. It's a. Uh... I will say though, Scott, being a fan of this team, covering this team, it is a little bit jealous invoking, jealousy invoking, um, hearing about how absolutely incredible Justin Fields and Trey Lance are looking so far in camp. Now it's camp. We will see when the bullets are flying. I'm not there to see it live, so I can't speak or if it's just the, uh, you know, the fan goggles hype machine going on because they're trying to drum up fan support, fan hope, because that increases numbers and that means more eyeballs, that means more money, et cetera. But uh, yeah, I'd be interested, God. you know, what are media? You can't trust media. You, you mm. just, you just can't, you know, uh, well, I'll tell you what I think, but you know, you gotta, you gotta go and verify, you know, we're, we're media of sorts, but I've seen so many times where beat writers, they just don't know what they're looking at nope. and they don't know that certain things are set up to succeed. You know, the, the, the offense should be killing the defense in preseason. They should be killing them. You know, we, you talked about, uh, was it with Sternod getting yeah. toasted a couple times at, at linebacker versus tight end? Well, they should, you get a one-on-one. -on -one, uh, if you can isolate a linebacker in your tight end, that should be a completion mm -hmm. every time. Well, guess what they're doing most of the time in practice, isolating one-on-ones. Yeah. -on I got no safety help. I got no pass rush. I got no quarterback under pressure 
And I got both sides of the field with nobody on either side. Man, if I can't get open and make a catch, then I got to go find another place to work. Yep. So, you know, a lot of that is geared Situational. for the offense. It's so hard to play offense. I mean, it, it, they've, they've, it, it doesn't seem that way with the way the points are going. But we've talked about it before. 11 guys, if one guy screws up on offense, it can end the play. On I'm, defense, if one guy does his job right, it can end the play. So it's hard to play offense. So a lot of the preseason is about getting the offense up to speed, and they really, really hold back the defense. You're not allowed to hit. Can't go to the ground. Can't hit the quarterback. You can't do any of those things. Nope. So going back to what Nick says, let's see what happens when you're allowed to you're allowed to hit some of these guys, and you've got defenses flying all over the place, changing up their coverages, blitz coming from 18 different directions. And then we'll see. That said, the early returns on these guys, you know, we liked them for a reason too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, God, and I had a point to make. Totally lost it. Maybe it'll come I back. I talked to too me. long. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, I had it, and then I was looking at the comments here, and then uh, whoop, it's gone. It's out of the head. Um, Lee Roy Williams coming in here saying to the Broncos, I have a losing season this year, and Fangio is fired. Who would you want as the head coach? Um, can we get a redo and bring Kyle Shanahan in here? You know, who do I want? Um, who's possible? This is me just, you know, putting on the, I'm taking off the, the host cap here, here, uh, for one second, putting on the aluminum tinfoil hat, looking for connections. Uh, there's one name that maybe it's a little bit early in their career to be a head coach, but everybody's looking for the next offensive wonder kid, right. For, for head coach and play calling, um, with ties to the organization in a multitude of ways. Clint Kubiak is the offensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings. You have obviously the Kubiaks have a long connection in Denver. Um, And now you have George Payton in here who knows Clint Kubiak because uh, what he's done in uh, Minnesota. And uh, that's one that it's like, Hmm, maybe it's a year early, but uh, for the offensive young uh, play callers, if the Vikings offense kills it this year, uh, which they were killing it last year, um, we are seeing the success of Kevin Stefanski in Cleveland and also Kyle Shanahan, that offense there, um, George Payton, you know, he knows him. He can call over to Rick Spielman, I think is the gen- general manager there, um, in Minnesota and be like, Hey, Clint, is he ready? And Rick's gonna be like, listen, this kid brilliant knows the offense, innovative, uh, can lead a room, et cetera, et cetera, this positive outcome. So, uh, Clint Kubiak is a name I'm keeping in the back of my mind for that scenario. How about a guy with Colorado ties? that seemed to be close a lot last year, um, getting a very nice internship under Andy Reid. What about Eric bien You know, he he interviewed a lot of places last year, offensive coordinator Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I thought he could end up with the opening with the Falcons. Um, I don't know why he did he, why he gets passed over, um, but, you know, maybe it's not time yet, but it's coming up. I feel like he's going to get a shot sooner rather than later. This does sound like pure, I will say this is pure hearsay because I can't verify it, but there does sound like there was some off the field problems um, the enemy had while he was in Boulder. Um, And that makes the connection a little bit hard. Now that didn't stop Vance Joseph from being hired in Denver, who also had some off the field stuff going on there. Um, But yeah, we have Jeremy coming in saying he has some Colorado skeletons in his closet. Um, He's definitely one though. That would make a lot of sense. Also, I know he just signed a big contract and nobody wants to go defense back to defense, but um, Todd Bowles, is an incredible play caller, a good leader. Um, everywhere he's been a defensive coordinator, he's been uh, awesome. And he, the Jets were set up to fail. He didn't have a chance with the New York Jets there as the head coach, and he kept their head above water there. Actually, they were, they were competent there for a little bit with him, despite how bad the roster was. And then you see them go to Adam Gase, and they completely, you know, the wheels fall off. So Todd Bowles is going to get a chance. I like uh, Todd Bowles a lot. About, oh, well, Steve Spurrier failed with Washington. I'm like, did you see the Washington Redskins franchise for the last 20 years? Everybody has failed in Washington, yep. even Joe Gibbs the second time around. So, you know, Steve, you know, Steve Spurrier is a heck of a coach. So again, it's hard to judge, you know, yep. what, what else is there? You know, I don't necessarily want Adam Gase, but I'm not going to judge just based on what I see with the New York Jets. No, nope. yep, you're absolutely right. And uh, some people are asking, we had one right here. Okay. Chad, Chad Irak coming in here. Good to see you, Chad. Um, who do you think is a starting quarterback on Saturday? Well, <laughs> Gosh, we've just been so much in the comments. We might as well get to the the actual um, topic here, the headliner. Um, it does sound like Drew Locke is inching ahead in this quarterback competition so far. Now we still have the majority of the data to go left. You know, it's like calling a baseball game after the, you know, top of the fourth is over. It's like, okay, it's over. No, we, we still got a lot of innings to play um, just yet to make this decision. 
but it does sound like Drew Locke after scrimmage this past week is starting to inch he- ahead a little bit. He's creating more ex- explosive plays while the protection of the football has honestly been about equal for both quarterbacks. So that's, that's the way it's leaning, but we still got a long way to go. So who's going to be the starting quarterback. I would be shocked if it's not drew lock um, right now, given how close the competition has been. And um, that the fact that he is the incumbent also two years left to control younger guy um, right now, I would assume it's going to be drew lock. All right. It's taken 50 minutes, but we are now to our topic. At least that we had on our, on our, on our YouTube title. Um, and speaking of overreactions, um, it sounds to me that, you know, Drew Locke, pretty much everybody agrees that he won the day on Sunday. But does that put him ahead? Because from every everything I read, everything I see was saying that, that Teddy Bridgewater had been ahead up to that point. So are they still fairly even? You know, what is it? Is, can Drew Locke build on this? Because it's a good step. But does that put him ahead right now? That said, the incumbent's going to start. It's close enough that the guy that's been on the roster for two years, he's going to start. I'll be I'll be pretty surprised if Drew Locke doesn't start and if Ted, Teddy Bridgewater comes in later. But I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that Drew Locke has pushed ahead in the quarterback race. Uh, I think he had a good day from what I understand, from everything I'm, 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 I'm hearing, reading, and checking out, that he had a good day on Sunday. And now he's got to build on that. We know he's capable of good days. He's got a magnificent arm. Yep. Can he build on that? Can he show some consistency? Once he's done that, it's his. The job's his. But he's got to do that first. Um, yeah, no, I agree with you 100%. We got Clinton Riesig coming in here. Riesig saying, I support Locke. We expect a top five defense and hopefully an improved offensive line and other offensive improvement. Um, I support both these quarterbacks, but I'm also... Uh, you guys probably, if you followed us long enough now, you know my brand. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. I'm going to let you know because I do not believe in, uh, you know, like... I'm not here to build fantasies. You know, I'm going to try to be as realistic as possible. And uh, if that means tempering expectations or telling you guys you're being ridiculous and not fair, you know, whether that be Broncos last season with Drew Locke and we don't know what's going to happen versus uh, Garrett Bowles, especially after his rookie season, you know, the, just trying to not too high, not too low. As I said earlier, oh man, here we go. Uh, Broncos 17 and 0 with the orange, loving the orange here, the $20 super over on YouTube. Broncos 17 and 0. He always comes in. In one of the last minutes. Um, so we appreciate you for that. Finish, and Broncos strong. Finish strong. It's like, you know, Always. watching that 400 relay. You know, absolutely. The Broncos 17 0 runs anchor for Broncos for breakfast. There we go. There we go. Uh, Broncos 17 0 says uh, 104.3. Who? And uh, well, we appreciate the comment there. I'm not going to disparage anybody out there um, for the content they do or whatever, you know. For, I would say 104.3 has a reputation of being doomsdayers you know and uh some a little bit of uh inflammatory articles and comments but uh, there's there's plenty of good work out there and there's there's a lot of people who love them and different strokes for different folks and uh, obviously they're they're doing something right so i appreciate them also if all the people in the media are saying the exact same thing when there's something as subjective as what's going on in camp and football in general um, then we have something wrong going on. We need some or different. Or it's got to be blatantly obvious. Yes, or that. <laughs> or it's got yeah. Or it's got to be blatantly obvious. Yep. You know, which happens. Which yep. happens. You know, so and so looks fantastic. And then you hear that ten times. Pretty good chance he looked good. He's looked good. Yep, absolutely. So uh, we appreciate that very much. But I'm not going to be here to disparage anybody but the Las Vegas Raiders. I'm here for that all the time, no matter what. Hundred percent. God, I don't know if I'll ever be able to say that. I don't even write it. I'll, I'll say Raiders, but I. I that just is wrong. It's wrong on so many levels. Wrong. Las Vegas Raiders. So yep. Does that sit well with everybody else, or do you like the fact that it sounds ridiculous because they're the Raiders? I'm excited about it because uh, flights to Vegas are extremely cheap. Um, so that's the biggest thing. And also, uh, I think the Raiders probably lost their home field advantage going from Oakland to Las Vegas because it's going to be a visiting fan destination. A beautiful stadium, great city, and that means that uh, – Broncos essentially might have an extra, I get lose one of their away games because playing in the Coliseum was rough and dangerous and tough. Um, not the case anymore. So uh, I think that's going to be great. There's going to be a bunch of luxury suites with businesses and whatnot out there in Vegas. And now you also have the chargers who have no fan base for now. Um, I'm curious to see what uh, Justin Herbert's career can do for that fan base in a new city. Um, but uh, right now the Broncos have two divisional opponents that don't really have a great strong, uh, fan presence in the stadium itself so we'll see their big uh floppy lock saying my arm is not floppy good to hear that uh, big lock um oh no are you here Nick is freezing am I frozen? Up just a little bit 
So maybe I'm going to go solo for the rest of the day. Give him just a second. Um, it is just uh, it is just him, and I'm not the one that's frozen up, right? I know Jeremy's real active right now. Okay. Uh, Robert, okay. I see you with Dave, so I think it's him. I'm still fairly clear. Am I back? Kinda. You're just kind of pixelated. <laughs> oh man, sometimes some you think with Seattle would have amazing internet with uh, being the tech capital of the world, um, but I, sometimes um, it's not. I'm I'm I'm, I'm down in kind of in a in a hole by the river, and I don't get anything for a cell signal. But I've got two options for gig speed internet, which is very nice. Uh, which is which is very nice down here. So, um, but yeah, I, I've been to. I went to Oakland. I went to the Coliseum. Um, and uh, when the when the Falcons played there, and everybody warned me, warned me, warned me. I'm like, Listen, I don't know, you know, you know, be polite and keep, you know, don't antagonize people. And I haven't had any problems anywhere at any stadiums before. So you know, I, I feel like sometimes a lot of the people that find trouble or, or that are finding trouble, they're kind of looking for it. I don't know. Um. No comment on that one, uh, but uh, that's uh, I've been to a few college games, right? That's, uh, sometimes they're especially in Wisconsin, but uh, I part, partook in a few pregame festivities as well. So well, things can be yeah, a little I mean, you get 18 to 22 year olds that are sitting there drinking. And I mean, again, they're looking for it half the time, too. <laughs> I mean, they're going to hook on up the or get a fight. That, that's yeah. it. Maybe both. So anyway. Um, I think we probably should put a bow on this one because because uh, Nick's coming in and out, um, and uh, I just want to say I want to want to say thank you to everybody that came in. Uh, we have Max, Gary. I know your heart was in it. I couldn't tell for sure if it was a star, but you know we need to give you a shout out anyway. Andrew Lampy, Steve Sconey or Scani, Ronjo Broncos seventeen and zero. Max Power. I said, but I only said your first name. Uh, appreciate y'all for sure. Uh, I enjoy. We enjoy the conversation uh, that, that comes through here and looks like I'm definitely by myself now. Um, and we appreciate y'all being on here. I, I, I enjoy talking about other teams and the players coming through. So love having y'all love, love being part of this show. And it's almost football time. We've actually got real football that we can talk about on, uh, on, on next time we do this on Tuesday, we'll lead into the, the preseason game on Thursday, Tuesday, we'll actually be able to review. We've been previewing for six months now. I'm looking forward to being able to, and Richie Rich says, welcome to the Scott Kennedy channel. Um, looking forward to being able to talk about the review, about what we've seen. And I, I think as, as much as we've enjoyed doing this, I honestly think that's where this, this podcast will, will go to the next level because it's the analyzing and stuff that Nick and I both enjoy really more than anything. So I, I'm, I'm so glad that football is here. Yeah, and one thing that's really nice about uh, Scott and I being out of market, so to speak, when it comes to the Broncos, is uh, no chance for echo chambers up in here, right? We're not gonna, we're not in the Denver bubble, so uh, we're not gonna hop on the same narratives. We're gonna have our own narratives well, Broncos, um, based on our own opinion. I like this. He said, you know, one zero four three. Who for me that was literally. I'm like, oh, that must be a local radio station. I don't know who the hell that is. Exactly. So I'm not gonna hear. I'm not gonna hear everything else. I'm gonna take everything and I'm gonna see it from two miles high because we're already a mile up. I want to take the two mile high vision and 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 see what I see and you know I'll, I I try and keep everything positive um, mm -hmm. but you know if you ask me a question you'll get a you'll get an you'll get an honest answer. Yep, and we're both not. Uh, although I can ramble on for a bit, we're both honest enough to say you know when we don't know or we don't we're not a super uh, strong opinion on something, we'll let you know. But guys, it's gonna have to do it to uh, for us today coming up in an hour and the family is still here um of course when i logged out and logged back in i lost everybody in the chat um but uh so i think scott was running through everybody who donated today mm -hmm. just a second ago so i want to give a shout out to a few off the top of my head again Broncos 17 and 0 of course uh was one of them we had gary leeds palmer was in the house uh, ronjo did uh was as well uh muhammad badri uh i think was in the house as well um, so, uh, good to see you guys. Gary Lee's Palmer, of course, Peter Middleton also over in Cambodia. Hope you're doing well. Beautiful. Uh, you got to send us some sunset pics out there. I've seen, uh, I've had some friends that have gone to that area and, uh, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so thanks everybody for joining us today. If you like the content, uh, make sure you guys follow us on Twitter. Uh, tell myself, your at, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your, tell, tell your enemies. I mean, hell who cares? Um, <laughs> You can follow us both on Twitter, Scott at Scout Kennedy and myself at Nick Kendall, M H H. 
uh, while you guys are there also follow us at mile high huddle and at huddle up pod if you guys are joining us on facebook today click the thumbs up we got a two wow reacts today joseph fisher and tommy simmers got some hearts coming in deandre witherspoon victor rios roy osborne um if you guys are joining us on facebook though Follow us at uh, facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle as well as facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle pod. If you're joining us on YouTube today, subscribe, like, and share. Um, that can be extre- longer than a movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 um, we did the super speed ones. Um, subscribe, like, and share. Also, Scott's channel. Subscribe, like, and share um, to Scott's channel as well. I still have on my clipboard Scott's. Uh, sub confirmation here click one any of these links guys we got facebook here we got youtube here we got periscope here we got twitch click scott's channel he's gonna have a lot of good stuff coming in um appreciate everybody coming in because we're at an hour now uh scott what's the rest of the day look, look like for you finding a new light bulb yeah i gotta change the light bulb since i went dark over here uh actually Absolutely. my kids have a day off that doesn't Ooh. happen when they play sports you know nine times in a seven day week. So I might, I might go on a bicycle ride and get ready for uh Chelsea and Villarreal tomorrow, super cup. So we got real, go. real soccer coming up too. So it's an exciting time. And another little uh, shout out here. They, they should just hire me as a uh, PR person for them. But uh, Scott, I know you're a, a cyclist. Do you enjoy riding the bike? A lot of people out here in Seattle will take the ferry over to the San Juan Islands and they'll just bike around. They're small enough and beautiful enough that people will not to pay for the car, the ferry, and uh, they will just bike the islands, and uh, it's very accessible that way and beautiful. So uh, shout out to the San Juans. Shout out to you guys. Love y'all. Um, we'll see you again Thursday, Thursday morning. I'm losing the days of the week uh, to talk about what's been going on in the Broncos' uh, practices against the Vikings. Um, love y'all. Stay safe, and uh, go Broncos. <laughs>